Hello everyone, I'm just uh, going to wait for a few seconds slash minutes to make sure that everyone is here. Um, uh, whenever you arrive on the live stream, please just send a quick message in the chat so I can check that everyone is, uh, is seeing everything. Good morning, Indigo T Fish, whoever you are. Um, so just yeah, just just say hi. Uh, and whenever I got about ten ish I, which means that all of you are here, we can start with the actual content. So just so you know the point of what we are going to do today, let me just zoom a little bit more, if I can. Yeah, probably can. The point of what we will be doing today is to um, show you how you can set up your uh, development environment so that you have the right version of the Julia programming language, which we will be using, and the right version of the uh, VS Code, which is going to be the text editor that you use. I realize that my camera is off, which it shouldn't be. Why is it off? I don't know. That is strange. Anyway, well, you're not going to have to live with the experience of seeing my face for 45 minutes, which I think we will all manage perfectly well. So um, we are going to be using the Julia programming language, which lives at julialang.org. I will uh, send a link to that on the class group when we're done with this. I'm going to ask that everyone gets ver uh, version 1.5.3. Uh, and, and the reason is that it's going to make things a little bit easier if you suddenly have some issue. We all work with the same version. We should all um, have the same issue and all have the same fixes whenever we have one issue. If we all start working with different version, it could work, but it's also going to be uh, making things a little bit more complicated than they should be. So. The first thing you will need to do is click on this download button and that is going to bring you to a page which is called Download Julia. Depending on what operating system you are using, there is going to be a different series of links for you to click. So if you're using macOS, there's only one link, so that's easy. If you're using Windows, there are multiple different links for you to click depending on what computer you have, and I don't know Windows all that well, but if you have any issue and it doesn't work, I can work with you on trying to debug that. If you're using Linux, um, which is a thing that some people do, I do that, it's fine, you can download the version from here. I strongly suggest that you do not install the version from your package manager. Um, and the reason for that is that your package manager might have a version that is a little bit older than the version that is uh, 1.5.3. So we're going to be downloading the most recent version and we all have access to the nice, very cool features that are in it. So step one, whenever you will set up your development environment, is to download the language. It shouldn't matter for now that you have no idea to use the language. That is going to be the point of the next three weeks. But for now, we are going to just download it. When this is done, we are going to move to the second step of our process. And the second step of our process is going to download this thing called Visual Studio Code. It is the uh, free version of Visual Studio, which is a text editor, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a software in which you type things and then the computer does the thing. There is again uh, a little link here for your um, for the, the version that you can use depending on your computer. If you uh, if it is somehow recognized as being the wrong version, you can click on all the platforms here and then you have the list of all of the different possible things that you need to download. So the reason we are using Visual Studio Code to do that, it's because it has inside it an environment for Julia that makes interacting with the programming language a little bit easier. 
uh, and specifically what we are looking for, and that is going to be the third step of the process, is the Julia for VS Code extension. And when it is fully installed and operational, then your um, VS Code uh, environment is going to look something like this. Uh, we will go into excruciating detail into what each of these things are when we start actually working and doing some programming in the next week. But it is going to uh, provide us with an environment where we can get access to all of the features in the, um, in the language. And so we will all have the same environment and we will all be speaking the same language, so to speak. Um, and that is the final step. So installing the Julia for VS Code uh, plugin is going to be uh, something that we do from within VS Code. So whenever you have installed Julia and whenever you have installed uh, VS Code, you can start your text editor. So let me just do write that. So this is uh, my version of VS Code, which uh, as a project I was working on this morning. And so when you open your own version, it is not going to look like that. We are going to create a new uh, window. That's more like it. Okay, so what you see the first time you open VS Code should be something that looks like this. It might not be this exact same uh, color or style depending on the theme that you're using, but it's going to have all of this information. So what we need to do at this point is that we need to get um, VS Code, the, type, the place where we write text, and Julia has a programming language, which is going to be turning this text into science for some reason. We need to get them to talk to one another. So here is how you do that. The very first thing we will do is install uh, the Julia extension. So VS Code has a lot of things that it can do. There's a file explorer, you can search and replace some text, you can use version control, you could debug. We will use a few of these features during the class, but for now, we are going to um, click on the extension button here. Um, I do have a bunch of extension installed already because I used um, VS Code quite a lot. That's where I spend most of my day. Um, and we are going to look for the Julia extension. So whenever you search for an extension here, you will have a little button here to install it. And the one we want is the Julia language support. So let's install that. When you click on install, it is going to bring you to the page of the extension. And the page of the extension is going to tell you uh, that it is providing support for the Julia programming language. It is explaining what you need to do to get started. It is explaining the different configuration options, the different features, there is a link to the documentation and so on and so forth. So we can see now that it is installed. And this is where things are starting to get fun because the most recent version of this extension has a little bug. And we want this little bug to uh, not be a problem for us. So what we're going to do is change the version that we are using. So we are on the extension tab here. And previously we had an install button here. Now what we will do is click on manage and in the menu that show up, we will go on install another version. And the version we are going to use is the one immediately before the current version, which for the moment is 1.0.8. Um, and we are just using this one temporarily, obviously, uh, slash hopefully at some point in the next couple of weeks, a slight issue that is uh, in the current release is going to be fixed and we won't have to use an old version of that again. It doesn't matter for what we are going to be doing within this class. There is no very cool feature that we are losing. 
uh, but it is something that uh, we need to do for the moment to get access to everything. So when we click on 1.0.8, it is going to change the version of the extension. So suddenly we have a lot of information here. Uh, let's say reload required, because we changed the version of the extension. It says we can update, but we don't want to update right now because it still is an issue. We can disable or uninstall the, um, the uh, extension. So we are going to click on reload required and it is going to do what it says on the label. It is going to reload um, Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now we do have an almost fully operational uh, environment in which we can start writing our code and doing our science. I'm going to click on this um, the explore button here which is where we look for files and all of that uh, and we are going to open a folder let's say we are going to put that into work slash teaching and it's bio 6032 um, i'm just going to call that setup it's not important at this point so that's opening yet another window, uh, and this is simply because every project has its own editor window, and you usually won't have many projects open at the same time, so it's it's mostly fine, and there are ways to change that anyways if you uh, feel like changing it. We are going to be creating a new file, and for the moment, this new file has no content in it, so let me just zoom a little bit so that everything that happens is clear. Right now this file is it's entirely blank. It's not associated to a specific language. If we want to change this, we can click here on plain text. And that's going to open a little uh, dialogue and we look for our language. And the language we use for now is Julia. Now, if you've been paying a lot of attention to what is going on uh, at the bottom of the screen here, there's two things that are going to happen. The first one is um, there is a new information here, which is the environment that we're using. Uh, we'll get into the details of what that means next week. That is a fairly important concept in Julia. Uh, and the next point is starting Julia language server. So. The Julia language server is actually a little piece of software that is going to do some um, some translation. Uh, it's going to bring messages from the text editor to the programming language and from the programming language to the text editor. And that's going to give us access to all sorts of really cool features. Some of these features, for example, are autocompletion. So if you know, if you type the name of a package, it will suggest the name of the function that are within this package. Um, if you type the name of a function, it will show you the different arguments. Uh, if you put your, uh, the cursor of your mouse over a function, it will show you the type of uh, the documentation for this function. If you do a plot, so it will open a specific window for this plot within your text editor. And so the nice thing is that you won't have to leave this uh, this program for the duration of your work because everything that you want to do in Julia can be done within this extension. The first time you install the package, it is going to be taking a little bit of time uh, because it's building thing. It's sort of like bringing new uh, software and, and making sure that it's working on your computer and then it's installing it. Um, and it's going to take a few minutes, but it's only for the first time you do that. And that is going to be a common uh, point in Julia, that the first time you do something, it takes a little bit more time. The second time you do it is really fast. I'm not going to tell you why right now, because it doesn't really matter. But I will tell you why uh, in uh, one of the classes from the next couple of weeks. Just know that it's not going to be that long every time you do it. It's only going to be long on the first um, on the first activation of the package. Um, <clears throat> so we are just going to let this thing go uh, 
as like as it's uh, as fast as it can it's going to be a minute or two if you have questions at this point feel free to use the chat to ask them and if you don't have questions that's fine whenever the uh, language server is installed then we can move on oh it's actually finished um so what we can do now, and I'm, it's not going to be a long introduction to the language, because we will take uh, nine hours to do an introduction to what's up with Julia anyways. But what this will, the fact that we have a language server will allow us to do things like we write two plus two, and then we press uh, control and return, control enter. And it is going to start a Julia session right within VS Code, which is really uh, interesting. There is a message in the chat that I'm going to get at in a minute. Um, so the thing that's happening here, the first time we execute something, it is telling us that it is pre-compiling something. What is pre-compiling is another package in Julia that is helping with the communication between things. And so when we run something, it is going to rely on this package existing. So if we do two plus two, and then we press control and enter, it is going to say four, which is good. It, we want to check that things like that are working before we do anything more complex. So that is how you set up your environment in terms of having the language, the text editor, and then the ways for the language and the text editor to communicate between one another. So if you've been using something like RStudio before, which I suspect most of you will have used, it's the exact same principle. You have the language that is running, but it's sort of like hidden behind the interface of your um, of your work environment. So the comment in the chat is, it looks pretty bad. That is an interesting comment because uh, could you please clarify it? There are a couple different ways in which something can look pretty bad and sometimes it can look ugly and maybe sometimes we want to change the way things look to make them more to our test. Uh, so I'm just going to wait for uh, a little bit more clarification about what it looks pretty bad means. So one thing that is important while well, I'm, I'm waiting on the further uh, messages in the chat is that this thing here, the part where uh, you edit the text, and this thing here, which is called the REPL, which stands for something, which is not important to know what it is right now, it's just where the magic happens. Um, they are sort of independent. So this is a normal file, and if we save it, we can save it and call it like 2 plus 2.gl. And this file is going to remain when we close our text editor but whatever the content of this thing here is not. So the things that happen in the terminal, they are only existing from the moment the terminal is open to the moment the terminal is closed. So the way I'm going to encourage you to write, during, uh, to write your code during this class is that you try to put things in a file. And so if you want to check what is 2 plus 2, but also what is 3 plus 5 or whatever, you are going to write that into a file because that is going to remain in its place for the duration of the entire class. It's going to be a normal file on your computer. It lives in a specific location. But if you type things here in the terminal, as soon as you close the terminal, as soon as you close the window of VS Code, it is not going to uh, remain available to you. So that is something that is, um, it is something that is important to, to notice. So you, you can use this interface to try something like, what is six plus four? Yeah, it's 10, cool. But if we close the window, then we will have lost the very precious knowledge of what six plus four is because we have not saved the instruction 
um, in, uh, in a file. So put things in a file in two weeks. We will see how we can document and comment all of that. Uh, and then uh, and then you can execute them in the terminal. But the terminal is not something that has a long life. It is something very temporary. Okay, so the comment is, it's hard to see where the function and objects are, and it's different from the interface using Atom. So Atom was, uh, still is, another text editor that has a robust Julia integration. It's the one we used last year for the class, and the reason we're not using it this year for the class is because the Julia community has decided that um, VS Code is going to be the new environment. It's going to be where the development effort is happening and where the very cool features and very tight integration between the language and the uh, software are going to happen. So we're just going to go on a quick uh, sightseeing tour, I guess, of what there is to know about VS Code. The most important thing is that on the sidebar, there should be a new little icon here which is called the Julia Explorer. And if you click on the Julia Explorer, it has a number of things. So let's go through them. It has this thing called base, this thing called core, interactive util utils. It has something called ends, which is 10. I'll try to guess what that is. Something called evil and something called include. That is sort of the basic objects that are here. Let's try to take a guess as to what ends is, and we are going to do something like five minus three. And this is two. So what we have in the explorer here is going to be quite simply, like ends is the last value that was returned by whatever you have executed. If we create a variable, uh, we are going to call it five and we will give it the value of five. Then we can see that there is a new, um, there is a new thing, uh, a new entry here called five and it has a value of five. So some of you don't apparently have all of this option in the Julia Explorer, which is something that we can take some time to uh, debug maybe after the class. If we're being perfectly honest, I almost never use the Julia Explorer here. I just like type things and look at the results in the terminal. And it's only when, um, it's only when I, um, I, I want to look at a specific object that uh, I need to uh, go here. So one of the reasons for which you might not have all of that in the Julia Explorer is because you need to tell the VS Code extension where Julia lives on your computer. And let me show you what I mean by that. We are going to click on extensions. Uh, in what is installed, we will look for the Julia extension and we will go into manage. Oh, sorry, we're supposed to left, left click. Can I just, oh, sorry, no, extension settings. We're going to go on extension settings. I'm going to close the terminal, by the way. Um, and in the extension settings of Julia is, um, there's a number of things. And the one that I am specifically looking for is the path where Julia is located. Oh, is this one. It's called Julia executable path. So what that is telling you is that on my own computer, Julia, the program, lives at dot local slash bean slash Julia, whatever slash bean slash Julia. Um, on your computer, it is going to live in a different place, probably, because your username is not my username and your operating system is not my operating system. But the first thing you need to do is find the path for Julia and put it here. If you're not quite sure where the path is, I am fairly confident that at some point in the documentation of the Julia VS Code extension, you will find something about 
setting the environment up. There are a few different places where it can be depending on if you're using Linux or Mac or uh, Windows or something else even. And that is going to be uh, explained here. If you really don't get it to work in the next like, couple of minutes, uh, the next time you try, just do send me a message saying, hey, I don't know where Julia is and I'm using this computer with this operating system and we, we are going to figure it out. It's usually not a very difficult problem to solve, but it can be, it's one of the things that we need to do um, at the beginning. So 90% of the problems that we have in programming is just installing things. The actual part of writing the program, that's easy. The, the really, really complex stuff is getting things to work in the first place. And that is a good, um, that is a good example. So uh, what else did I wanted to show you? Not, not much. We're not going to be doing plots right now. We are not going to be um, dealing with the um, complex or advanced features of whatever. Just all I wanted you to show uh, to see was where to get Julia, where to get VS Code, where to get the extension, and then how to make sure that everything is working together. If you have that, you are all set for next week. And so next week, we will be working on the very basics about how computers think about numbers and about values and about variables and this sort of things as a sort of foundational knowledge for uh, the first three weeks of this class, which are going to be about learning how to program in a way that is a bit more formal than we usually do as biologists. So I am going to end this stream now and uh, we are going to return to the Teams meeting just for a quick debrief uh, and, and some information and uh, we will start again at this exact same point next week.